what's up guys and welcome back to another video in this video we're going to look at how to build a more complex calculator now we have created a basic calculator that can do simple addition sums now if you want to go watch that video i'll leave a pop-up banner in the top corner and the link in the description of this video with that said let's get started now our calculator will be able to do all operations depending on the input it's given we're going to be using a lot of if statements in this video now if you don't know what if statements are i have a playlist on if statements that will get you up to speed with what's going on in this video i'll leave a pop-up banner to the playlist or you can find the link in the description of this video so in my text editor i'm going to create a variable and let's call it num1 let's set it equal to float then we are going to create an open bracket input and another open bracket and let's say enter a number then two closed brackets now this might seem overwhelming but i'm going to explain what's going on we have a variable and we are going to call it num1 and instead this variable to float because the float function can handle integers and decimal numbers because we want the person who's going to be using the calculator not to be restricted to integers but also decimals then we created the input function. By now, I believe we all know what the input function does. If you don't, I'll leave a pop-up banner and a link in the description of this video to a video that will explain how the input function works and what it is. Then we created brackets and in these brackets, we put enter a number. It will all start to make sense when we run the program. Now let's create another variable and let's call it operator but i'm going to call it op for short and i'm going to set it equal to input and in brackets let's say enter an operator this is quite straightforward but those who don't understand i'm going to explain we created a variable that's going to store the operator it's given by the user let's create another variable i'm going to copy num1 and paste it down here and i'm going to change a few things let's rename the variable to num2 and enter another number this variable works the same as num1 only difference is that we called it num2 and said enter another number now let's move on to creating our if statements i'm going to create an if statement that says if op is equal to plus plus has to be in quotation marks and in fact all our signs are going to be strings don't forget the colon when we click enter our text editor will move us to a new line as well as indent the line on this line we're going to type print num1 plus num2 then we're going to create an elif function and in this elif function we're going to say op is equal to minus print num1 minus num2 i'm going to copy this line and paste it twice now here's an interesting fact about programmers as programmers we don't like writing code over and over and over so where we can copy and paste we're going to do that so we can save time that's why I copy this line instead of rewriting it over and over again. Now back to our program and I'm going to change a few things. On the first one, let's add a division sign and say num1 divided by num2. Then let's add a multiplication sign and what we can say is num1 times num2. Then I'm going to create an else function. This else function is not necessary but is to make our program more complete and a little bit more professional. For this else function, let's print invalid operator. Now we have written all the code for our complex calculator. But before we run the program, let me explain what's going on in these if statements. So basically, these if statements are checking the variable op. And depending on the input the user gives, it's going to run the necessary code to complete the task. Let's run the program to see what will happen. So here at enter a number, let's input 9, then click enter. At enter an operator, let's input a plus sign, then enter. Then at enter a second number, let's input 36. Now when we click enter, it's going to add 9 and 36 and it gives us 45. Okay, so, so the code that adds the numbers works. Let's try the code that subtracts the numbers. So I'm going to rerun the program and this time let's enter 72 at enter a number then press enter at enter an operator let's input a subtraction sign then i'm going to press enter and at enter a second number let's input 13. now when i press enter it gives us 59 so that the subtraction code works this time let's try multiplying the numbers let's rerun the program over here let's input 8989 and over here i'm going to input the multiplication sign then press enter down here let's input 23 
and when I click enter it gives us an answer of 206,747. So with that we know that our code that multiplies the numbers works. Now let's check if the code that divides the numbers works. So I'm going to rerun the program and enter 1895 and press enter. Then I'm going to input the division sign and press enter. Then over here I'm going to input 5. Now when I click enter it should give us the answer and down here it gives us 379. Now with that all our code works. Let's check to see if the else function works. So I'm going to rerun the program and over here let's enter 5 and press enter. Then at operator instead of entering an operator let's enter a letter. I'm going to type an A then press enter. Then over here I'm going to input 16. Now when you click enter it's going to print invalid operator. So all our code works and you can play around with this calculator, improve it and customize it. Now all this time the calculator has been giving us our answers in decimal format. If you change this float function to an integer, it's going to give you whole numbers instead of decimal numbers. And that concludes this video. If you have any constructive criticism or any questions or anything, comment them down below. Consider leaving a like and subscribing, turn on post notifications to be notified when I publish a new video. Until next time, thanks for watching. Peace.